I've been painting and drawing my entire life. I uh, just was fascinated as a kid and uh, something that, uh, that I excelled at, you know. People gave me praise for it and I just continued to do it because it made me happy. I studied all the classical artists, European artists, um, but uh, primarily uh, the first art that I was familiar with was uh, two-dimensional flat painters in Oklahoma. I grew up around, uh, well I spent time in Chickasha and Anna Dark and my dad was friends with a bunch of Kiowa and Comanche artists. And uh, this was the first kind of art that I, was on my walls when I was a kid, so I grew up, you know, copying Rance Hood paintings and Larry, uh, Larry Hood and Woody Big Bow. Um, so, you know, two-dimensional flat art in Oklahoma, um, southeastern uh, pre-removal beadwork is a huge influence. Um, even uh, contemporary modern artists of today uh, influenced me a great deal. Yeah, the original uh, painting uh, was called The Master of Breath and uh, based on Muskoki creation stories. Um, the original is in the permanent collection in the Five Civilized Tribes Museum in Muskogee, Oklahoma. And uh, this one uh, shows uh, the creation of the winged creatures, uh, birds mainly and butterflies and things that are in the air, you know, that are sacred because those are the animals that are closest to the creator. And uh, the creator is, you know, has a, a feminine quality and so the figure in the, uh, in the painting is, is somewhat feminine. Um, even uh, the ear spool that you see at the top, it has the, uh, the OG symbol, which is an ancient symbol. Um, some relate it uh, back to fertility or, uh, or birth, you know. And this is seen through pre-Columbian art and uh, early uh, Muskogean art. And uh, there's elements of beads and shell and uh, this is, a, you know, before silver and turquoise and even beadwork, there was, you know, these natural elements. Um, so I'm trying to deliver something that is, you know, really kind of ancient in origin. I went to Savannah College of Art and Design and that started my formal education. Um, I started to become aware of art history and uh, European <clears throat> artists and movements and uh, when I graduated from uh, art school in Savannah College of Art and Design I uh, went into uh, the decorative painting business and uh, eventually that led me to want to go study abroad you know so I spent uh, six months in uh, decorative painting school in uh, south of France with a French master named Michel Nadai and I learned uh, the art of uh, faux marble and wood, uh, trompe l'oeil ornamentation, and uh, panoramic uh, mural painting. And uh, this kind of raised up the, the quality of uh, um, my experience level, you know, and um, made me available for different projects in uh, historical uh, preservation, conservation, um, which eventually led me to uh, do work in the U.S. Capitol building and uh, other federal buildings. Um, I grew up uh, outside of uh, Muskogee country. Um, and, you know, of course, going away to Europe, you know, I, I lost a lot of contact with my family and um, I kind of lost myself a little bit. And when I came back, I started doing uh, art markets and uh, native art shows, uh, some juried and some museum shows. And throughout the whole experience, it's allowed me to reconnect with uh, other native artists and other uh, Muskogee people, traditional people. And, uh, you know, I've been educated through that experience. And uh, 
in a way, it's it's brought me uh, a lot closer to uh, Muscogee culture and other other natives, and uh, it just helps me to keep uh, keep connected with what it is that I'm that I'm trying to do. You know, I'm I'm not doing something that that I think will sell. I do something that that makes me feel good. That uh, makes me feel like. Um, there's an importance to it that I'm carrying on uh, uh, ideals and uh, history and uh, that that the painting now is you know it's rooted in tradition but it's also something that's contemporary and uh, almost modern in a way, so I think there's 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 just like you know, with the old, tr traditional stories that change over time, you know those ideals can be uh, carried over into painting, and uh, depending on who's telling the story, um, they're going to give you a different viewpoint, different aspect, and I think that's how how the the overall story grows in time and evolves and becomes something uh, new again because everybody has different experiences. It's nerve-wracking. Painting for me live is not something that I normally like to do. Uh, it's um, it's kind of nerve-wracking. People want to ask you questions and what does this mean? And you're kind of put on the spot. You're really exposed to uh, you know to the crowds and the elements. And uh, at home, it's much more of a personal meditative uh, practice. But. Um, it's good to reach out to uh, you know the community and uh, educate people about you know what what it is that I'm doing, and uh, also uh, hopefully inspire. Uh, there, there's a lot of children here today, and uh, you know I remember seeing artists as a young boy and saying, "Wow, I'd really like to do that someday." So uh, hopefully uh, you know I've inspired some young people today. Maybe they went home and picked up the paintbrush or you know some pencils or something and started making something.